This is the second in a series of talks on corporate corruption and capitalist externalities. First talk was on asbestos, and this talk is going to be on talc and asbestos. Because wherever talc is mined, asbestos is present in the talc as an accessory mineral. It's not a contamination. In other words, it's not added in afterwards through processing or something else. Where the talc grows, the asbestos grows with it. I'm going to go over some of the geology that explains that process and a little bit more about the types of asbestos found in talc, the concentration, and why it's dangerous. First, three points. Talc is present in all talc mines. The talc cannot be removed from the asbestos, from the talc, I'm sorry. The asbestos cannot be removed from the talc. In other words, the asbestos is in the talc and there is no process by which the asbestos can be removed. And the third important point is there's no known safe level of asbestos. That's because the amounts of asbestos in talc are far lower than the amounts in other products. But the exposures, the amount inhaled, may be similar or higher than the amounts even workers get from working with other asbestos-containing products. How do we know there's no asbestos-free mines? Well, one way is to listen to J&J. &J. In 1973, the issue of asbestos in talc had been raised five years prior. J&J &J did an investigation. They sent a memo to the then president of Johnson & Johnson, D.D. John Stone. He was not related to the original uh, founders. You can see his name is spelled differently. It is our joint, this is the results of the J&J &J investigation, it is our joint conclusion that we should not rely on the, quote, clean mine approach as a protective device for baby powder in the current asbestos or asbestos form controversy. We believe this mine, that was the mine they were using at the time, to be very clean. However, we are also confident that fiber forming or fiber type minerals could be found. In fact, they had already been found. Therefore, the usefulness of the quote, clean mine, close quote approach for asbestos only is over. J&J &J at the time claimed that they had, were using mines that were free of asbestos, which they called clean mines. But as you can see, this was a complete fabrication. They knew from the beginning that all of the, asbestos, the talc mines contained asbestos. And this was, of course, no surprise since in 1898, Dana's textbook of mineralogy noted that asbestos was one of the minerals associated with talc formations. This is a quote from, from that book. Asbestiform minerals have since been found in association with talc and he names them. Actinolite, anthophyllite, chrysotile, tremolite. In addition, chrysotile was found. He didn't name them in this sense. These are witchite, Jim Thompsonite, and clino Jim Thompsonite, and chesterite. Are there other similar fiber forms that are chemically similar to asbestos, but they were never sold as an asbestos product? They never came out of a bag named asbestos. As I mentioned in the last talk, asbestos is a commercial term for fibers and other associated minerals that came out of a bag labeled asbestos. Rio Tinto no, did this graphic. There are four different 
kinds of formations that make talc, all of them were found to contain asbestos. That's by the largest talc mining company in the world. Sorry, I went backwards. In 1972, J&J &J told Health and Human Services, which is where the FDA was, that it was a misnomer to believe that talc could be processed to remove asbestos form particles. Quote, we know of no process that guarantees total removal of all the elongated particles from talc. The J&J &J process does benefit officiating of Vermont talc, which we believe to be the most advanced in the field, but it will not guarantee a zero tolerance for elongated particles. And the third point that I mentioned, this is a testimony of Johnson & Johnson's corporate representative. He speaks for Johnson & Johnson in trials. And this is what he said in answer to three simple questions. Johnson & Johnson knows that asbestos in its talc could make people sick because Johnson & Johnson knows that asbestos is a carcinogen and can cause mesothelioma. Implicit in that question is they knew that there was asbestos in the talc. Answer, yes. And Johnson & Johnson knows there's no safe level of asbestos exposure, especially for children, correct? Answer, again, there is no safe level. That's right, especially for children, correct? Answer, yes. So these are not my words. These are J&J's words. These are statements against interest. And they, Johnson Johnson met with Dr. Selikoff, who told them the only safe level for, asbe for asbestos was zero. And that they hadn't proven that their powder was completely safe, that is, asbestos-free. In fact, Dr. Langer from Selikoff's lab had tested J&J &J talc and found asbestos and showed them the asbestos under a microscope. The reason that talc and asbestos are found together is because they're chemically the same. In fact, tremolite asbestos can be converted into talc and vice versa. There are three main components to talc and asbestos, magnesium, silica, and water. Asbestos also has other minerals, iron and calcium, in some forms of asbestos, but these core minerals overlap both talc and asbestos. That's why they grow together. And this is another Imrus Rio Tinto slide, again emphasizing that asbestos forms in all places where talc is formed, no matter what the process. There are three forms of talc. There's a foliated or platy talc. There's a fibrous talc, which can be converted to fibrous asbestos, particularly anthophyllite, which is chemically almost identical to talc, and then a crystal. So even in form, talc can look like asbestos fibers. And again, talc forms from asbestos, and asbestos can form talc. Okay. There are two conditions for asbestos to be present in talc formations, the rock type and the geologic process. And as I said bef before, all the rock types produce both asbestos and talc. I'm going to just show these quickly. First was a metamorphic. This is a dolomite process. This is a transition where anthophyllite can be converted into talc. And in fact, talc and anthophyllite can form in a bundle together. 
a bun these are a bundle of fibers, some of which are anthophyllite and some of which are talc. This is the same picture, diagramming which is which. Cleavage fragment is a fibrous form that looks like asbestos and has the same surface properties as asbestos. It cannot be distinguished from asbestos microscopically. I'm going to look at some of the mines. Let's start with the Valchisone mine, which is the Italian mine, which J&J and other talc companies used as talc from. This is a picture of a miner from the Valchisone mine in the 30s or 40s. Valchisone is in Italy. The talc mine is in the Italian Alps. This is me at the entrance to one of the talc underground mines. These are underground mines. This is some testing that Patel did for J&J uh, in the 50s, finding talc shards. And they also found tremolite, a form of asbestos, and they found fibrous tremolite. Okay, this is Macron finding five chrysotile fibers in Italian talc in 1965. That was testing done for Whitaker, Clark, and Daniels. This is another set of testing on Italian talc done by Fulham, who used an electron microscope. And he found both chrysotile and amphibole asbestos. These are all in the early 70s. This is Johnson, Johns Manville, finding fibrous talc and chrysotile in Italian talc in 1973. Okay, in total, there were 53 tests in the early 70s that showed the presence of asbestos in Valchisone. This is a study done, funded by Johnson & Johnson in 1976, a study of the miners. They found tremolite, and those were fibers of tremolite at low concentration, greater than five, or five microns, and they reported that in a published paper in 1976, funded by Johnson & Johnson. Pooley did studies of the mine for Johnson & Johnson and found asbestos in some of the shipments. He found fibrous talc, which can become fibrous anthophyllite, in shipments. Despite the fact, when he was asked by the FDA if he found asbestos in talc, he said no. In 2017, Ilgren, another researcher, went back to the mines and found, along with the owner, an unopened can of talc from the early 1970s from Valchisone. This is a sold product. He reported and showed pictures of tremolite asbestos and reported three three million fibers per gram in the talc. Now you say, well, that's less than 1% asbestos. How can that be dangerous? Well, Addison did a study showing the release of dispersed asbestos from soils. So here we have chrysotile and sand chrysotile <clears throat> intermediate, 1%. Chrysotile intermediate, 1.001%. And the fibers in the air, 
24 fibers per cubic centimeter. The OSHA standard, which isn't a safe standard, but does reduce the amount of cancer from asbestos, is 0.1. So here you have 240 times more asbestos in the air, in this case, 480 times more asbestos in the air than OSHA would permit. This is an early study done by NIOSH on the amount of asbestos released from Johnson & Johnson medicated powder and baby powder. And he reported 1.8 fibers per cc when the baby was being uh, in a simulation diapered and the mother doing the diapering 2.2 fibers per cc. About the same with medicated powder. Again, the level that OSHA says is permissible is 0.1. This is a study of asbestos released from various uh, talcs. These were Colgate Palmolive, Cashmere Bouquet talcs, and they found in the breathing zone about the same as NIOSH, a little bit more, 4.8 fibers per cc. 3.1, 7.3, And the average you finding was 1.9. The bystander, someone not doing the diapering, had 1.35 fibers per cc and 1.8. These are way above what's a permissible, and certainly way above what's a dangerous level since there are no safe levels of asbestos. Sorry, I went in the wrong direction. This is asbestos, anthophyllite asbestos, found in the lungs of a heavy user of J&J powders. Anthophyllite was not in any commercial product that this person was exposed to. Very few commercial products in the United States used this and this type of asbestos. This is tremolite, which was never used in any commercial product. It was found with Chrysotil. But this person had tremolite in their ovaries, but no chrysotile. Again, in a heavy user of J&J &J talc. In 1974, Valchison published a pamphlet saying that the Italian talc contained traces, their talc contained traces of chrysotile. Only traces of chrysotile. J&J &J found out about the pamphlet and were quite upset about it. The pamphlet also said that there was tremolite in some of their talcs. Again, only, quote, traces. J&J &J had the mine withdraw and collect all of these pamphlets so they were no longer available. This pamphlet that we got came out of the J&J &J files. Okay, they discussed in a telex back to corporate headquarters, claiming that traces didn't mean much. Later on, Johnson Johnson argued that trace in Italian meant zero. That's not correct. The word for zero is not trace in Italian. So they went with Mr. Ferry, who was a seller of Italian talc in the United States for a company that, that um, later became part of a larger talc company. And they agreed to get the distribution of that pamphlet stopped. And they succeeded. Italian management will stop distribution of all English versions of the publication effective last Wednesday. And they said they were going to rewrite the publication, but they never did.
So this is J&J &J success temporarily because one of their consultants found Tremolite in the litigation in the last several years in Italian tax. MVA, which is another company, tested RJ Lee's specimens and found fibers of asbestos in the talcs. They also found it in a Chinese talc. They funded Rubino's study in order to control it. Nonetheless, Rubino's study, although it was edited by J and J, contained information, if you pieced it together, that he had found fibrous tremolite in the talc. Okay, J and J then selected people who would who they would try to influence. To say, to say that there was no asbestos in their talcs. And they orchestrated the presentations by Val Chasson and got Val Chasson's data on their study of workers and worker illnesses. Again, J and J detailed access to the data in Rubino's study, and they told him what to put in the paper. And told him what not to put in the paper. They rephrased the paper in order to, to hide the fact that the process of origin of the talc indicated that there would be likely fibrous mineral content. That was in the draft. It was deleted in the published paper. They deleted all the references to chrysotile. And in fact, this is a J&J &J employee, Hildig Smith, rewrote the English version of the paper for presentation. This is J&J &J telling uh, the owner of the mine in Italy that they were going to, that they had changed the results. When the study was published, they thanked the authors, thanked very many people, but they neglected to thank Johnson & Johnson or the other people who had taken out the asbestos information. And that concludes this talk.